staying grounded and staying present and in the present moment. You've heard me say this multiple times and probably other people and you're like, I'm not really sure what that means and how I'm supposed to do that when my mind is going a million miles an hour. That is what we're going to talk about today. Welcome to episode 80 of the Positivity Experience, staying present, staying mindful and appreciating everything you have. Check it out. Hey, everybody, and welcome to episode 80 of the Positivity Experience. It's your girl, Lori. I cannot even believe that I just said that, like 80, 80 episodes. Holy cow. Wow. Thank you guys for just being here. I'm super excited and super grateful, which is a huge, huge part. Gratitude is a huge part of what we're going to talk about today. And you guys know, and you hear it in all of my content, everything I talk to you guys about, about staying present staying here, staying now, staying grounded, and why I really try to beat that into your head and why it's so important. So again, I am recording this earlier than when you're going to hear it. So if there's any Patreons, um, I promise I'll get, get to you as soon as I get back. If you're interested in the Patreon, it is a paid version of this that gives you the tools. So like, we'll give you exercise, we, I don't know who the we are, but I will give you exercises that you can do to enhance whatever it is that we're talking about. And if that's something you're interested in, you can do so right in the show notes. There's a link directly to the Patreon. You can find me there. But I really want to talk to you about this whole grounding thing. Okay, so let's explain a little bit about what grounding is, all right? So think about if you're obsessively thinking. And I have been the queen of obsessive thinking since I was about six years old. So obsessive thinking, right? I think to some level, we all overthink, right? Like at some point in time, you're like, how's this interview gonna go? What am I gonna do in this relationship? There's always a level of overthinking, which is kind of standard and kind of normal. It's when you get on that merry-go-round of constant like, oh my God, what if this happens? What if this happens? Now you're starting to do storylines inside of your head. You're making these storylines really big and you keep playing them out. And now this, you're on this merry-go-round for days on end never going to serve your highest uh, good. And that's easily to let you know that you're not staying grounded. And staying present is, I'm not lying to you, probably one of the biggest things that has saved my life, quite literally saved my life. And to stay present, like you hear it, but honestly, until you experience it, you're never going to fully understand what that means. So to, stay, so to stay present is to be right here, right now at all times. Understanding that yesterday's history, tomorrow is a mystery you only ever have today. And that's the biggest thing. And I think people who have somnophobia, which is sleep sleep um, phobia, um, and thanatophobia, thananophobia, is uh, death anxiety, various things like that. You find it typically sometimes hard to stay in the present space. But the reality is the time in which you have is right now. You have not tomorrow. You have not yesterday, but you have today and you have this moment in time. So it's getting yourself to live in a space of intention and grounding. So let's think about what grounding is. And over on Patreon, I'm going to give you this amazing exercise that I love to do for like to ground out. It's such an amazing exercise. I swear by it and I do it every day as much as needed, sometimes three times a day, sometimes 10 times a day, who knows. But it's imperative that you practice grounding. So, so let's think about that. So if you're up in your headspace and you're constantly thinking, worrying about what's going to happen tomorrow, worrying about what's going to happen at work, worrying about what's going to happen with all of these things. If you're constantly in that space of worry, you're going to constantly remain in that space of worry. You can't be present while worried about something that has happened yesterday or that could happen tomorrow. You're not staying present. Okay, so to stay present means to stay in the situation that you're in, in your headspace, in that moment in time, right now, right now. And here's the thing with grounding. Think about if you are constantly in your headspace, think of yourself as being like fluttery. You're like fluttering like a little butterfly, constantly thinking you're not grounded at all. So to be grounded means that you're staying in the present space. And you've probably heard people say, oh, well, what can you do for grounding? You've heard people say, oh, put some salt, Himalayan salt in water. I'll explain that in a minute because it's an amazing tool. And understand that you only ever have today. And that's where the intention comes in. So to stay present 
means to understand that all of the things, and this is where you have to put your ego down. And I promise you, we will do a podcast on ego death, but I promise we will, because you need to have the ego death in order to have a healthy ego that you can walk in at hand with. But you have to understand that when you're processing yourself staying in this present space, you are vulnerable and you have released all control to anything and anyone that is around you. Now, I will be honest, it is not easy. And it is something that has taken me many years to learn, but you must practice it every single day. Now, I was raised, and I know a lot of you know this already, I was raised Southern Baptist, uh, went to church Sunday, Wednesday, sometimes Monday, sometimes Friday, and it was a thing. Church was a big, huge factor in my life growing up, even though I was going through everything I was. And it just, there was always something that always seemed like I was being judged. I'm saying my experience, wherever you are and whatever you believe, I'm here for you and I love that you have it. I'm saying from my experience, it seemed very judgy for me and it just didn't align with me. When I found the Buddhist practice, which is not a religion, it's Buddhism is not a religion, it's a way of life. When I found that, Um, along with a little bit of paganism, along with a little bit of everything, because I'm fortunate enough to work with people in every different religion um, and every different culture. So I take a little bit of all of it, to be honest with you, and kind of make it my own. But one of the biggest things that I learned in Buddhism is that, A, you learn non-attachment. So you're not attached to humans, you're not attached to things, you're not attached to outcomes, which again, promise I'll do a podcast on that. But what you're attached to is nothing. You're, you, you understand that everything, including life, is temporary. When you can understand that and you understand that you don't have, and this is this big part that you have to understand, your parents, your siblings, your spouse, your kids, they are not your property. And when you're clear in that, you don't have an attachment to that. You love them. You appreciate them for where they are, but you don't expect things from them. When you carry a level of expectations, you're not staying grounded and you're not staying in the present space. So to be in the present space is literally to be exactly where you are. And here's where people get themselves tripped up a little bit is when you go, yeah, but when I try to stay present, my mind races. Yeah, so what? At what point do you think that you're just supposed to start a mindful or a meditative practice and you're supposed to be able to just knock it out the park? Let me be the first to tell you, never gonna happen. So A good practice is to have one of your journals, either your negative journal or your data dump journal with you when you are trying to stay in the present space. Because it's going, you're going to have to start really slow, like 30 seconds, maybe even 10 seconds, build up from there and be in that moment that you're in. Okay. So if a thought comes, it comes. No big deal. Just acknowledge it. Now, I like to form, formulate those thoughts into little clouds, little puffy clouds, and then I send them out into the horizon. So when you do that, you're not, and this is the biggest thing when I teach people meditation and I teach people meditation all over the world, is that people say, I can't meditate because my my mind wanders. Okay, so what? Yeah, you just acknowledge it, see it for what it is. Don't try to change it. Don't try to uh, trip it up and go ahead and let it process, right? You see it for what it is. You put it in a little puffy cloud, send it out. Maybe you have to do that 10 times while you're meditating. That's fine. But you have to be intentional in your actions without an expectation. So in order to be grounded means you have to put your feet in the ground. You have to strip off your shoes, strip off your socks, go put your feet in the ground. I do not care if it's 11 degrees and I do not care if it's 111 degrees. You go and you put your feet in the ground. You stop, you pause, and you live in gratitude. So I want to talk a little bit about that. Like, how can you stay grounded during these stressful times? First and foremost, you have to own that moment in time. Okay, so when you take every single moment in your life, one at a time, you only can handle one thing at a time, right? So if you're in this moment in time, right this second, you can only deal with whatever's going on right now. Don't worry about what you got to do tomorrow. Don't worry about what you had to do yesterday. Don't worry about other relationships in this moment. These, the five journals, I have a YouTube on the five journals, go watch it. The five journals will be very key to this because it gives you the opportunity to stay in that moment in time. You can't get overwhelmed about other things that you need to do or should do or did do or could have done differently when you're staying in this moment in time, this one moment. Whatever is going on, let it go on. 
Now you have to take charge of your emotions. And again, going to do something on it to where you can understand not responding out of emotions. Your emotions are not facts. I don't care how, how real they seem to you. They are your experience in that moment in time, but they are not a fact. You have to own your emotions. Don't make it seem like you can't control your emotions. You absolutely can. You're choosing to not do so. Yes, you can. So you have to be in the moment. And even if you're feeling stressed or you're feeling sadness or you're feeling fear, you have to own it. Take charge of it. Now, you and only you are in charge of your choices, right? So to be mindful is to make a mindful choice. It's very easy if your feelings get hurt or if you're feeling some kind of way for you to go out the box and do something irrational or uh, impulsive. But the reality is you have to control your own choices. You are in control of your own choices. If something around you is not serving your best and highest good and moving the needle in your direction, then you have a choice to either rock with it or not. I don't care what the other person thinks about it. I don't care what the other person feels about it. This is your choice. And in order to accept your choice, that's where your self-confidence comes into play. Now, self-confidence comes into play in that moment in time. You're not worried about what is like Tom going to think of my uh, words. What is he going to say if I do this? It doesn't matter what Tom's going to say. It does matter how you're going to hold your emotions, see them, make your choices, deal with whatever the outcome is. See, your biggest issue here is you're trying to wait to make a choice that's going to be a successful choice. You don't know that that's to be facts. And if you're waiting to make a choice that's always going to be quote unquote safe, you're never going to make a true choice that's going to make you grow ever. Okay. And here's an interesting thing. And it's something that is a huge part of my focus. And if you've been my client or if you guys have been on this podcast for a while, you know this is helping other humans. You need to be your first and major priority for yourself, but you don't need to be anybody else's priority. When you are good, make sure that everyone around you is good. If they are succeeding, quote unquote, without you, that's fine. Be good for them. Stop doing things as a transactional relationship. Be kind because you choose to be kind. That's how we stay grounded. See, the art of kindness and love, true love carries zero transaction. So if your love carries a transaction, mm, then it's not really true love because you're making it into a transaction. All right. Now, another thing that you have to do is take the time. Take the time and sit in the reflection. You can sit in reflection all day long, but please keep in mind that no one is responsible for your feelings. No one is responsible for your feelings. No one has to come to your rescue. And by the way, no one is coming. No one is coming. Stop waiting for people to hold you grounded. You, have, you are your best friend. You are your best lover. You are your best human. You are the only human that will spend 100% of your life with yourself. So to sit with yourself and love you for exactly who you are, all your flaws, all your, I don't know, cellulite, all your pounds, it doesn't matter, but to love that. Now, another thing with being in control, being grounded, I hate to use the word control, so let's say being grounded, being who you are, is to learn to say no with no explanation. You already know that's a huge one for me. When you are mindful and when you are present, you are protecting your peace. And no is a perfectly complete sentence. See, you can't go through explaining your no to someone because if you do, then you're worried about how they're feeling. Now you're waiting for their approval. That's not staying grounded. Staying grounded is protecting your peace in that moment and understanding that you're not harming someone. You're not using manipulation to try to get them to do what you want to do, but you are protecting your peace in that moment in time. Okay, and that's the biggest thing. And it goes into kind of loving yourself, keeping yourself healthy, nurturing yourself. This is where mindfulness and grounding will come into play. Again, I've said it and I'll say it again. No one on the planet is responsible for your feelings. No one on the planet is responsible to make you happy. No one on the planet is responsible to help you along in your life. No one. So when you allow yourself 
to love yourself, to appreciate yourself for who you are, and to sit with yourself, to watch the birds go by, watch the leaves on the tree. Take a deep breath. Exhale. That's staying present. Let's not make it more than it is. To stay grounded is to stay in the present space. When your mind starts to wander and you start overthinking and you start worrying about things, that's fine. Look at it for what it is and say, can I do anything about that at this moment? No. Is it happening right now? No. That's your ego. That's your ego, right? And think about this. Think about your worries, what your fears are. And then you have to find a way to deal with it. Okay. Yeah. It's majorly negative, but it's only negative if you allow it. Your worry and your fear is one million percent in your control. Do not under any circumstances do that thing where you're like, well, this is just how I am. We're not doing that game. That's not grounding. And that's definitely not staying present. So to stay present is to be right here, right now. So let's do this little exercise, right? I want you to take a deep breath in. Come on. Exhale. Okay. I want you to look around you right now. And I want you to find five different colors. I don't care if it's an apple. I don't care if it's a tree. Take a deep breath again. Exhale. I just want you to identify five different colors of something. Okay. Take your deep breath. Exhale. I want you to look at one thing and I want you to be descriptive with it. Look at the texture. Look at the size of it. Look at the color of it. Look at the shape of it. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. You just stayed present. See, you can't make things more difficult than they need to be. So when you allow yourself to do that, that's where you start to say, oh my God, this isn't as hard as I thought it was. Now, you can't just do that exercise every now and again. This is where you have to check yourself. I need you to ask yourself this question. Be 100% honest with yourself. Are you really willing to do the work? Before you say yes, hold up. That means the five journals. That means creating a routine that every day you have a minimum of 30 minutes just to yourself. Every day, not every week, not every month, every single day. Are you willing to put yourself as a priority over other people? That's where you have to ask yourself that question. Because this has to be a consistent practice. You will never learn the art of mindfulness unless, in fact, you allow yourself to be mindful. And that's going to be creating a routine. You have to stick to that routine. I don't care if you feel like doing it. No one cares if you feel like doing it. It's easy breezy to do things when you feel good. Easy breezy. The big key is how do you show up for yourself when you don't feel like doing it? Yeah, it's real easy to watch Netflix or scroll your phone versus do the five journals. Yep, I'm not gonna lie to you, super freaking easy. Is it effective? No, it is not. So you actually, this goes back to that first one I said, you have a choice. You choose your destination. You really do. So if you think that scrolling social media or scrolling the internet or doing watching television is benefiting you, but then you say you want to feel better, but then you're not doing the work, then mm, do you really want to feel better? Because it's not going to be on your terms. You know, and that's why making time for yourself is the most imperative, important thing. So you have to understand when you do that, people are going to absolutely be all up in your space. They're going to be like, oh, I can't believe that you're being selfish. I can't believe you're being self-absorbed. Blah, 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 blah. But we're not doing that. Right? So there's that 54321 scenario that also happens during anxieties. But we don't want to just utilize this during anxiety. We want to use this in our normal day-to-day -day practice. So one time a day, I need you to build this into your schedule. Do not say you did it three times a week and that was sufficient. I said, do it every day. Now, are you going to knock, at, knock that out the box? Absolutely not. There's going to be times you're going to have to start and you're going to fall off the wagon and give yourself the space and grace to give yourself love to know that you fell off the wagon and that you need to get back up and do it. But it's the five, four, three, two, one coping technique. So you say, okay, there's five things to look around you, similar to what I just said to you earlier, but this is a little different. Look at, identify five things around you. Now, look at four things in which you can touch around you. Touch them. Three things that you can hear, two things that you can smell, 
one thing that you can taste. If that means you have to get up, go to the, to the, not to the grocery, unless you have to, into the pantry, get some salt, get some sugar, get whatever, get peanut butter, put it on your tongue and taste it. That's the five, four, three, two, one technique. But it's also good to stay present, not just when you're battling anxiety. See, the big problem that I think a lot of people have is you try to utilize these two tools only when you're in peril. But then you go, well, this isn't working. Of course it's not working. Your body doesn't know what it's supposed to do. Then you're doing it out of desperation. So you have to be very careful on these expectations that like you're having for yourself. So there's different grounding techniques and I want to talk to you about them. So one grounding, and like I said, we'll go deeper in this on Patreon, but one grounding technique, like I was saying with salt and water, you were like, what? If you take Himalayan salt, okay, so salt is from the earth. So it's a grounding, it's a grounding factor in general. It's a grounding mineral. Take your water bottle or wherever your water is, and take a tiny pinch. You don't want it to be super salinity, but you you want it to like go ahead and put some, um, uh, you know, a little bit of a pinch of that in there. It helps ground you. Taking deep breaths helps ground you. Putting your feet in the ground helps ground you. Holding onto your crystals helps ground you. Doing your journals helps ground you. But see, that's the thing. And that's the biggest thing is to understand that even exercise Exercise alone is grounding by itself. Breathing. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Eating foods that are grounding. Like I said, the salt. Starting your day with the 10 minutes of gratitude in your gratitude journal. Setting a timer, pen to pad, writing that in there. See, these are all things, but you're so caught up in, well, what can I do? And should I be doing more of this at work? And should I be doing more of this at home? And what could I do with my family? And what should I be doing? Whoa, skirt, let's pause for a minute. What are you doing to stay grounded right now? Because no one's going to ground for you. And those are the important factors, right? Is to understand the importance of the grounding, but understand that you deserve to ground. And until you're able to say that, then that's going to be a problem. Okay, so think about this. Here's some common things that are associated with staying present. Obviously, staying staying present on the present moment. A strong sense of your own self-worth, right? Yeah, and people, listen, a sense of purpose is absolutely grounding, but I don't want you to be like, well, I'm not sure what my purpose is. You don't have to know what that is off off the rip, right? Nature is your best, best, best friend. And balance is another key. So to have balance of work and uh, fun balance, like life balance, super important. And then creating a space for your mindfulness. I have two spaces in my house where I work on my meditation, deal with my crystals, do with my writing journal. They are my spaces. I don't want anybody in them other than the cats. They're allowed in. No one else is allowed in those spaces. I don't care if they like it or don't like it. That's my space. And that's the key. Give yourself a space that you're allowed to work in, a space allowed, meaning that you're allowing yourself, not them. Okay. And like stay in the space in which you're in. It Listen, it's not always going to be great. I'm not going to lie to you. But just remember, let me give you some benefits in the staying present. Deep sense of peace. That's right. You are allowing yourself to be peaceful with or without other human beings in your space. You also feel safe, you feel calm. It also prevents a lot of that anxiety thinking and that anxious thinking. It's a natural stress reliever. It also helps determine and and shape your focus in life. And it also enhances what you enjoy and your appreciation. When you live your entire life based around gratitude and service to others without sacrificing yourself and allowing yourself to be your first and major priority, now you have a perfect balance, if perfect is a thing. And and that's the biggest thing. But you have to know that you deserve appreciation and stillness is your key. See, you don't want to sit with yourself and you cannot want to sit with yourself all day long, but until you're willing to do it, you're never going to stay present. To be still is to deal with your space in your head, the things that are talking to you, the old thought patterns, those things. You have to be willing to deal with them. Obviously, the surroundings that you're in. Do you hear birds? Do you hear traffic? What are you doing? I mean, obviously, breathing is always going to be a thing. 
right? You're, you're box breathing, you're inhaling, you're feeling it. Those are so important for you. But see, that's how you stay present is to understand that no one on this planet is coming for you. Now, if you're like, oh my God, how can I instantly get, get grounded? Go throw your hands on some water, preferably cold water, right? You can do it on your fingertips, on your palms, things like that. Picking up and touching items, which is why you'll have a lot, like when I crochet, I realize that my crochet is also part of this technique because I'm feeling the texture or the style of the uh, yarn that I'm using. So touch those items, breathe deeply, get connected to your breath, go eat something, taste the salt, taste the sugar, take the texture, taste the texture, go for a walk. Walking is the key. Holding ice, you know, I've got a couple of TikToks I've done on that. Holding ice keeps you grounded. Grab a candle, grab a scent of something, start smelling things, you know, and, I, and one thing you can do is if you, as a matter of fact, do this right now, okay? Set down your phone if you have it in your hand and I want you to take both hands and I want you to shake them off, like just shake them. I'm doing it with you. Shake them, take a deep breath in, exhale, shake them that actually gets things moving, okay? You can jump up and down, you can jump rope, you can go for a jog in place, you can do stretches, you can go quick sprints, you can do it all. And that's the important factor. Hear what's going on around you. Is there a car going? Is there a siren happening? Feel the thoughts, touch your hair, do all of those things, right? A good thing with your mind. I like to play Sudoku, Sudoku, not Sudoku, Sudoku or other puzzle games to like help me stay focused where I am. Journaling will absolutely help you stay present, right? Sometimes I'll do math. Sometimes I'll count. I'll recite a poem. I'll think about a fun thing and laugh. I have an anchoring for phrase that I use. I am capable of handling anything that the, that the day sends my way and I only ever have today. And if I have to say that six more times, I will. Also see yourself being at peace. Allow that to happen, right? And then you can even go through some of your traumas and pretend as though they're like a piece of luggage and you're putting this luggage on this conveyor belt and it's just taking it away, right? And so those are important factors, but you have to be willing to do the work, right? You have to be able, if you have a pet, sit with your pet, pet your pet. Think about yourself. No matter what you like or don't like, that's fine. Love who you are. Think of your favorite color. What's your favorite food? What's your favorite place on the entire planet? If money was not a pro, an, an object, where would you go? And that's what I'm saying. See, do you see how that is? Music is good for that. Music is great. And but you have to allow yourself to know that the moment you feel distressed, flashbacks, any kind of emotions or anxiety, that's a, your body's signal to say, hey, hey, babe, can you stay grounded? Can you stay present? But you have to be willing to do that. Listen, again, not meant to be comfortable. If you have anxiety and you're allowing your, remember, this is practice. This is going to be consistency. If you're having anxiety and all of a sudden you tell yourself, hmm, I'm just going to do some breathing. It's fine. Okay, that's not going to happen. I need you to like reel in your expectations. And I need you to understand that even when you're in that space, it's not supposed to be easy or fun. Nothing comes easy out the box. If I said, hey, babe, let's go play tennis. And you're like, never played tennis before. Okay, probably you probably shouldn't think about being Serena Williams then. You probably should be okay with not understanding even what your forehand or backhand is. Be okay with getting hit in the head with a ball. Be okay with like not even knowing how to hold the racket. That's okay. But you know what? If we did this every single day, oh, you're going to start to know how to hold the racket. You're going to start to know how to like, oh, let me serve. Wait, hold on. This is my forehand. This is my backhand. So you have to realize that unless you're willing to put in the effort, you don't get to say you want to feel better. You don't get to say that you want to be now. You don't get to say you want to be mindful. Stop saying that and then thinking that your ego and being in control is a thing. Those two things don't live in the same realm. You can't be in control and mindful at the same time. Cannot happen. 
So until you're able to relinquish, not even able, until you're able to accept yourself to relinquish that, you're going to remain stuck. And that's what I don't want you to do. It's not going to serve your best and highest good, babes. You only ever have right now. Doesn't matter what these random people around you or even your family's doing. Why are we, why are we over there with them? I promise you, you worrying about what your kids and other people are doing is not staying mindful. So you also have to allow yourself to release what no longer serves you. Release people in situations that you cannot control. You're trying to do a narrative on them when your life isn't even balanced. You know how I feel about that. Very often, it's very easy to judge others and say, this is what needs to happen. But yet your life isn't in check. So practice the art of staying presence. I promise you, when I tell you it has saved me, it has saved me multiple times. And you say, oh, you don't get rattled. I don't. I don't. I, people don't bother me. People's rudeness doesn't bother me. Their actions does not bother me. If it doesn't serve me, I'm not going to rock with it. Why would I invest energy into something that doesn't serve me? That's silly. So I want you to understand that when you're practicing your mindfulness. Stop worrying about other human beings, including your family. Stop it. You're here now. And remember what I said to you. You and only you will live 100% of your life with yourself. Take a deep breath. Oh, exhale. It's not that deep, baby. I promise it's not that deep. So allow yourself to work on this process. And when you do, when I tell you it is a gift that you give to yourself, it's absolutely free, by the way. You don't have to pay anybody for this. This is a reward and a gift you give yourself. But you have to be willing to put in the work to make this a habit. Always remember, a habit takes 21 days to form and 120 days, four months, to start to be a habit. So if you're not willing to commit 120 days, you're not going to make this a habit that's going to be sustainable. You can do it for 28 days. Don't say I did it for four days this week. And like I said, in the beginning, it is going to be, you know, spotty. It is. But after that, no. Okay, you want to do this seven days a week. You want to carve that time out to be present. When you feel yourself going to the what if or what could have, pause, take a deep breath, be mindful. You're not trying to fight the thoughts. Remember, we don't fight thoughts. We see them, we let them come. Take a deep breath. Exhale. There's gonna be a lot of that going on in many of my podcasts. And then just see it for what it is. Put it in a cloud and let it go. Can you do anything about it? Nope, can't do it. Then you gotta let it go. Be willing to release the ego. Be willing to not get the last word in. Be willing to not have people know your side of the story. It's okay. At the end of the day, baby, you're all you got. So you take a deep breath in. Deep breath out, look around you, and that's grounding. And again, I'm going to give one of my favorite exercises over on Patreon, but it this is something that you guys can do, man. It's free, but you don't get to say you want to feel better and then think this is hard or too much work and then not do it and then go, why is this, why am I not in a healthy space? Babe, that's on you. This entire grounding is always going to be on you. No one is coming for you. So when you get clear in that, then you're able to stay in this moment in time, look around you, live in gratitude, understand that you're only control of yourself. All of that right there just kept you present. Until you're willing to release control, you're never going to stay present. Be vulnerable, be content, be grateful, take a deep breath, exhale, Stay right here right now. Because you know what? At the end of the day, it doesn't matter how much you try to deny it, how much you want to change it, all the things you don't want to do. You don't have forever time. That's not a thing. Your time's going to go. It's going to run out. And if you're worried about when that's going to be, you're never living in the present space. Stop fearing death and start loving life. You must live your life but it's for you to live no one else. So stay present, stay here, stay here right now and understand that this is the moment you have. I don't care what you need to do. I don't care how you need to grow. None of that's relevant to me right now. 
What matters is where you are right now, right here. Doesn't matter what you need to do. You can't worry about what you need to do tomorrow, today. Practice this. And that is, by the way, meditation. Meditation.